It's amazing that at the end of his teaching ministry, Jesus devotes so much time to giving his disciples a picture of history to come. Now, when we read this, I mean, I read Matthew 24 many times, and so have you. It doesn't look shocking to us. Basically, all Jesus says is, to us 2,000 years later, something that sounds quite familiar. Jesus told them that what we know is the history of the past 20 centuries since he said this, the world would have wars, famines, troubles, and persecutions for Jews and believers. And that's just what's happened. That's all Matthew 24 says, that there'll be this ongoing you know, kind of mix of wars and rumors of wars, and there'll be famines, and there'll be pestilence, and there'll be persecution of believers. And that's basically the last 2,000 years. If you just back off and look, you see those elements. Now, the long, hard scope of human history is painful. That's what Jesus was saying. He's saying, once I'm rejected as king, there's going to be this long period of painful human history. Now, the disciples waiting for Christ to march to power, remember, they thought he was bringing in the kingdom. His disciples did. That's why Judas gave up on him, because he didn't do it. So he said, I'm going to betray this guy. He didn't do what he said. He's not really the Messiah. And so the, this, the other 11 didn't see Jesus taking the throne back. They didn't see him routing the Romans. They didn't see Israel being brought into the kingdom. And now it's so troubling to hear Jesus' words. For all the things Jesus spoke about to take place meant a long time was going to pass between this time Jesus was on earth and when he came back. I mean, if you just look at, at Matthew 24, starting at verse 3, if you look at that, it takes a long time for all those things to happen that he's talking about. And so as the disciples listened to Christ explain these things, and what was to come for their city, Jerusalem, and the people, the Jews, they must have been stunned. Jesus described a long, tortuous history for Jerusalem and the Jews, filled with wars, conquests, persecutions, and globally felt disasters. You notice what it says. Jesus says, look at verse 6. You will hear of wars. That's plural. It's not a war. It's wars, plural. Next, rumors. Uh, it's not a rumor, it's rumors. Jesus painted the picture of a long time. Look at verse 8. He said, this is only the beginning. It's just going to get worse and worse. Basically, Jesus, now listen to this. Jesus was a pessimist when it comes to history. Did you catch that? Look at verse 8. It's only the beginning of trouble. Jesus was not an optimist about human history. Jesus was a pessimist about human history. In other words, Jesus was not the theological group called the post-millennialist. You know who they are? They think the world's going to get better and better and better and better and better, and finally it's going to be perfect. Jesus wasn't a post-millennialist. Jesus did not tell us things were going to get better and better. Rather, he said they're going to get worse and worse. So Jesus was a pessimist about the future. Jesus said the world to come after his death, burial, and resurrection faced a barrage of false Christ. L look what it says in verse 5. Take heed, or 4. Take heed lest no one deceive you. Verse 5. Uh, because some will come and deceive many. Look at verse 11. False prophets will rise up and deceive many. Uh, look at verse 24. False Christ, false prophets will rise and show great signs and wonders and deceive. You know what Jesus said? You know what the future is going to be? A barrage. It's going to be a barrage of false Christ, false teachers, false messiahs, false prophets, interspersed with wars, rumors of wars, ethnic strife, and persecution of God's people. That's Jesus Christ's view of history. If Jesus was your history teacher, and he is, that's his view of history. By the way, just what Jesus said came true. Jesus said that they're going to come and destroy the temple, and they did in AD 70. By the way, there's a whole group of people called preterist, and it's very popular. A preterist believes that everything in Matthew 24 was fulfilled in AD 70. The problem is verse 15. When did verse 15 happen? When did the abomination that causes desolation stand in the temple declaring himself to be God? In AD 70. It didn't happen. And that's why all the tribulation events that are in the rest of the chapter also haven't happened. But all the disasters mankind has ever faced will roll on until the period when each type of disaster gets magnified to the point everyone on earth feels the horror. By the way, did everybody on earth feel the horror of AD 70? No. 
about 70% of the world didn't even know Jerusalem was destroyed, ever. I mean, I don't know if the Chinese ever got the word. I don't know if the, the people living in India ever heard that Jerusalem got destroyed. It wasn't felt. I mean, certainly uh, South America, North America, and Oceania, and, and most of Africa never heard about it. But in the tribulation, the whole world feels the events. So history taught by Jesus can be summarized this way. The period between his first coming, born in Bethlehem, all the way through the triumphal entry in the cross, and his second coming, which is yet future, will be nothing but relentless troubles that will eventually reach the point of never before seen disasters globally. Plus what Jesus said, and I showed you in verse four, five, 11, and 24, the backdrop is gonna be deception. So this morning, the, the key element of this whole talk Jesus is giving is not about how bad the disaster is and how to identify which ones are the key ones. The backdrop is deception, deception, false Christ, false Christ is coming. Now, Jesus gives the only true map of the future. What you have before you, this, this is, and, and if you have a red letter Bible, all but a few words in chapter 24 are blazing red. This is Jesus giving us a map of the future. We should listen. <laughs> 